What is up guys, I hope you guys are all doing well. This time we're going to be checking out Andrew Tate, the official trailer movie 2023. And the thing about Andrew Tate, he's a very polarizing figure. There's no doubt about it. But whether you love him or whether you hate him, you need to give him an opportunity to speak and explain himself. Or otherwise, it's just a bit ignorant. You need to give everybody an opportunity to speak. That way we can start to learn more about them. Because if we just judge someone without even investigation, that is just ignorant at its finest. So why don't we just jump into this? This, see what it's all about all right let's do it i will say this because i sat on every single podcast if they lock me up for some insane bullshit Andrew Tate has been arrested. i didn't do it the, the matrix logic. has attacked me if i carry on with the trajectory i'm carrying on they're going to put me in jail because i'm too influential for the people watching at home they just need to sit and understand that the system does not make rules for the good of you it makes rules for the good of the people who make the rules. And a lot of the life paths laid out to the average man at home today is not for their own good. It's only going to lead them to depression and misery. Do you think you're a force for good? I absolutely not really know I'm a force for good because I'm a force for truth. And truth is a good thing. Without truth, we're going to end up in absolute tyranny and slavery, and we're already on our way there. I think there's a whole swath of the population, especially young men that feel disenfranchised. I haven't put a magic spell on the world. The fact that people like what I say means that they agree with me deep inside. They may be afraid to say it themselves, but I am seen as a bastion of free speech and a bastion for masculinity as a whole because a lot of men are largely forgotten about. There's no evidence in my file that that's nothing wrong. Everybody knows I'm innocent. This is a huge injustice the way we see it. They should not be detained at this point. There are not even charges filed against that, them. People are that's trying what's to insane say. about this. No charges filed against someone and they are held in jail for three months plus. He's been in jail since I believe December 31st. And there is not a single charge levied against them. Now, if you, that does not make you furious, I don't know what will. Because that could be you. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice anywhere. So if you see something like this. It's got to light a fire within you, because this is just straight up corruption. Him up to look like he's something that he's not. I mean the best for people. I want everyone to be successful. I want the world to be a better place. And I think the world's a better place based on the back of strong men who stand up for what they believe in. I think that's how the world's always been a better place. The Matrix programming says the opposite. They're telling us that to be a better place, all the men need to be weaklings and compassionate without any morals or without any hard lines or beliefs. And they must talk in a very, very uh, soft way. And we need to be very, very compassionate and very, very tolerant and all these things. But if you look at history, the only times things were peaceful and nice is when strong men stood up with their swords and said, no, this is mine and this works this way. And no one's going to come fuck with it. I think that masculinity and strength is what makes things beautiful. It's what preserves things. And it's what we need more of. It's what's missing from the world. That's also a good point. Masculine. Because in order to have peace, you need to be strong. If you are a weakling, you will get picked on. Weak people will always be bullied or harassed in some way. There is an old saying, speak softly and carry a big stick. What he's basically saying is carry a big stick. Be prepared for anything that could happen because there is a there's a very high likelihood that it will. And the worse shape you are in, the higher the likelihood that something will happen to you. You know what I mean? No one wants to mess with that big burly guy. So you have to stay prepared. Have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good hearted and God fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. If you cannot control your own mind, then you are just a feather in the wind of life. Because your own mind is the only thing you can control. You can't control the weather. Right. You can't control other people. You can't even control whether your heart stops beating. You might have a heart attack tomorrow. You can't control anything besides what you think. There's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's genuinely masculine. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. It's absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you have, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. 
And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence, you get racists. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not gonna hurt people. He's gonna sit and think about his actions very carefully and he's gonna be a good man who protects for and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're gonna find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. Absolutely not really wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inversed on its head. Completely not really wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're gonna feel bad sometimes. You just suck it up and perform anyway. Not just sit there, you cry your eyes out or blame other people. We live in a comfortable world now that, where people think, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Right, but you know what? right on the money. I don't know how anyone could disagree with that. What he just said is basically, you wanna be strong, you wanna be a stoic, don't want to be easily manipulated because weak men are the greatest threat to mankind. Weak men are the men that start wars. Weak men are the school shootings, all these massacres. If you have a man who can control his own emotions, then nothing can face him. Once you can master your minds, nothing else can bother you. It's like a ship analogy. If your ship has no holes in it, you're gonna be floating along for no problem. It doesn't matter what storms you get caught in. But if you have some holes in your boat, that's when trouble is gonna start brewing. Uh, to some degree, it does matter. It does matter, and I'm gonna tell you who it matters to. It matters to your soul, and it matters to God. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart. I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man and that man were to sit around and do f all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. If you're listening to this and you think I'm never lucky, I'll tell you why, because God dislikes you because you're f lazy. Start to work, start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky you'll become. Wow. God is unhappy with these people. And inside their hearts, they're unhappy. We talk about depression, anxiety. That comes from self-loathing. You loathe your own weakness. You loathe your own laziness. This is what all of these things are. I don't feel depression. How can I feel depression when I'm the most powerful version of me that I could ever fucking be? How can I feel depression when I could squeeze my own hand hard enough to break my own bones? How can I feel depression when I've smashed and destroyed 68 people's faces in front of me? Men who thought they could test me in fair combat. How can I feel depressed? It's impossible. Do you understand? The thing is, when you start working out and start taking care of your health, there's no hatred in your heart. Say you're feeling terrible right now. Go for a 10 mile run. When you get back, you're not gonna be concerned with whatever was bothering you before. So all these people who are so bitter and have so much hatred in their heart, most of these people, 300 pounds, and just talk, talk from a keyboard. The real men who put in the work day in, day out, they don't have anything bad to say. There's an old saying, it's like, Michael Jordan does not leave hate comments on YouTube videos. And that's so true because winners don't do that. You take time out of your day to try and spread negativity to other people. And I'm sorry, you need to change your ways. And you can, that's what he's saying. Love me. Andrew Tate's one of the most wonderful human beings I've ever met in my life. Mm. I hate everything that's going on. Like, love him with all my heart. Yeah. Like, I'll die on that mountain with you, bro. Yeah. Let's get on a hill. Where's the sword? Why is the, the enemy of the state, so to speak? He's going on. hearts of young men. And that's a threat. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like men nowadays need an Andrew Tate. He's a guy who's motivating men to be men. If you cannot control your own mind, then you go through life with zero control, zero influence. You can't control anything. You're just a feather in the wind waiting for life to blow you from happy place to sad place to happy place to sad place. Completely hoping on the gods to be fortunate to you because if any genuine discomfort comes your way, you're fucked. Because everybody's fucked distracted. They're getting distracted by this, distracted by that, watching fucking Netflix jerking off to porn pub like fucking jackasses. It's so easy to win if you can control your own mind. But it seems that nobody fucking can. And that's how the people who run the world keep the world running. Because they have all the slaves exactly where they need them to be. Permanently distracted and semi-depressed. Working their asses off in jobs which will never satisfy them and never pay enough money. That's the matrix.
Hey, Andrew, how do I get like a six pack quick? What's the best, fastest way to get a six pack? Why does it have to be quick? Why does it have to be easy? Why do you think life is all quick and easy? Why can't it be hard and difficult? Why can't you suffer? Because suffering is what gives it value. If everyone had a six pack and it was quick and easy, then it wouldn't be valuable, would it? If everyone walked around with a six pack and they got it easily, then no one would give a shit. The whole point is that it's difficult to get. Value is linked to difficulty. If you want something that is valuable, you need something which is difficult to obtain. The fact that you just said you wanted it quick and easily shows that your whole mental moral is fucked. You shouldn't be thinking about quick and easy. You should be thinking about hard, suffering, pain, going through it. That's what you should be thinking about. This is going to be hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because when it is done, then everyone's going to know that I went through something difficult. Why do you want it to be quick and easy? You're Don't right. you understand it how it defeats the mind? Is? It defeats the mind is broken. Your mind is that broken. Is He's right on the money with that as well. Like, I don't know how anyone could disagree with what he's saying so far. Everything he's saying to me is just straight up facts. Like, it can't be disputed. The thing is, I'm guilty of this too. In the past, I've looked up how to get a six pack quick, how to get a six pack this. I'm sure every single one of us at one point in time has done that. No point to do that because if you were just given a six pack like this, you wouldn't appreciate it. You do appreciate it when you eat chicken and broccoli. You go to the gym, you go on runs. That's when you truly appreciate it and you're proud. And you're proud to display that to the world. It shows that I'm a man who is willing to put in the hard work. I don't know how anyone could take this message and turn it into a negative, toxic type thing. He's just trying to tell us to be the best version of yourself. I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only gonna be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're gonna stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's gonna ever respect you. I think that the world's never gonna think you're important unless you make yourself important. I think you get to decide what character you wanna be in this movie, which is your life. You can decide if you wanna be a comedian or a musician right. or a fighter, you get to decide what you wanna be. And if you work hard enough, you can become it. It's the denial that's gonna hold you back the most. The people who go, yes, I'm wasting my potential. Those are the ones who have potential. The ones who stand up and go, I am wasting my potential. I could be anything and I am not that yet. They have a chance. This stream actually, like, I'm pretty sure changed, like, lives. I swear to God. Like, you changed lives just now. I hope so. The last thing he said was so powerful. It was those who acknowledge they are not living up to their true potential. They are the ones that have a chance. They are the ones who have a possibility to achieve more. Because those people who are saying, no, I'm perfect. There's no way I can improve. Those people are lost. It reminds me of something Conor McGregor said. Conor McGregor said, there's two types of people that you're going to meet in life. One are those who are going to see your success and they're going to feel with bitter, anger, jealousy, and they're going to start discrediting you. And then the second group of people are those who see this and become inspired, motivated, and then one day they will also experience that light. And the thing about it, there is only one person who determines which person you are, and that's you. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Before I watched Andrew Tate, I was in a very bad place mentally. I just... Knew I could have been doing better. I knew I was failing in many regards. And then I started watching him. He woke me up in a way that no one else can. I was praying to God for help. And then he sent help in the form of Andrew Tate. It's the fact that he cares so deeply for his supporters. And makes you want to encourage him and watch him more. Because he could have easily made a couple million doing a little crypto pump and dump. But it's the fact that he has convictions and morals. I believe he would never screw people over just to make a quick payday. Because God is the overseer of all things. He sees all. This man will be remembered for generations. Thank you for watching.